So let's get started. I will get my water. So how was lunch? Uh, it wasn't that bad, right? Or everybody's asleep. So my presentation is going to be about how you can create prototypes. And um, I want to get started on explaining what a prototype is and um, why and who should make those. And we will discuss how you probably can create awesome Android application with just using a prototype. By the way, I'm giving away prizes or giveaways during my presentation, and it's either for uh, the best result or the worst result, or in case nobody is, uh, who is awake. <laughs> so before I do, I, I need to know what kind of audience I have. Uh, show me some hands for the developers. Some people that do design. I love you, man. Uh, so this means no, no other developer? De okay. Oh, you really want one. Uh, okay. Uh, let me get back on that. Um, let me first introduce myself. My name is Wiebe Elsinga. <laughs> and as you may have noticed, I'm not... Ich bin keine Berliner. I'm, I'm your neighbor. I'm from Holland. And... Um, I also am a co-founder and organizer of the Dutch Android User Group, a GDG group, as all uh, other organi organizers are here, but I come from the Dutch chapter, we've got two, and I work at a rather small company, we're only 12 people, but we make awesome Android and even iOS applications. <coughs> so. First things we need to ask ourselves, what a prototype is. And it sounds like an easy question, right? We know you have some thought or some idea of what a prototype is, but it is really a difficult question because what makes a prototype a prototype? Or I'm creating a, a, a car and everybody knows a prototype is the modeled scale of how the car should look like, but how is it with a mobile application. So I created a definition and basically um, a prototype should be a early version of an ID you've got and to be more precise, pre precise <coughs> it should be a testable one but more on that later. So give some to, to test your the definition of what a prototype is let's Let's do some interaction and I will give you some examples what may or may not be a prototype. So, what are these called? These called? Segway, you've got a prize. Afterwards, I can give you the prize. By the way, it's a corny sketchbook because these are my Bibles. And because it's Movember, I've also a... I don't know what it's called in English. You can put it in the book and there's a little mustache on it. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. You're not. <laughs> <laughs> and the cameraman is following, my God, where do I need to go? So these are segways. And it was a good new way of transportation, but it already was a finished product. So for me, this is not a prototype. It's not the early version. And also, uh, I know it's an Apple. Really, I don't hate Apple, because when the iPhone was introduced, it really was a good invention. It broke the mobile market. But when it was introduced, it already was mass produced. It's not like a first version and, oh, there's only three or four. No, we only need to buy the iPhone, like we do with the Nexus 5 this week. <coughs> this isn't the prototype either. You can already buy this, it's like five dollars, and it can protect your face when you're eating noodle soup. <laughs> so what is a prototype? I always am starting with the name. This is Pranav, 
Pranav, um, like six years ago, he saw a movie and the technique was that, that was shown in the movie. He thought, hmm, maybe I can, create, I can recreate this with my own uh, stuff I got uh, lying around. So he s scrambled some stuff from home, he went to Radio Shack and he bought like some nifty, simple things. But he wanted to show, uh, he wanted to test if his ID that he saw on the TV could be made. Again, we're now going to do for the prizes, which movie did he saw? Yep. Yeah. Ooh, you're good. And is this a prototype? <laughs> it is, but from what? Price is the giveaway, and of course, uh, let's see some later examples. Everybody knows that the Google Glass wasn't just invented, it was created from several prototypes. So, now we know what is and what isn't a prototype, this raises the question, why do we would we use prototypes? Can't we build, can't we create? Why make the effort of creating a prototype before the actual product it's going to be made? Well, it should answer some questions, not only for yourself, but also from your stakeholders or from the end user. Maybe the end user has a different idea of what your idea is. So you want some answers, and if you create the prototype, this should answer it, or maybe raise new ones. Also, a prototype is a good way of uh, comparing the different alternatives. So create your prototype, create several, and test and compare them. Is this really what my application should be doing? In this case, it's a stylus. I don't think this is really handy. By the way, the, uh, I gave this talk in, oh, several times in, I think it was last year in Berlin also with the DroidCon, and uh, one guy thought, is he sitting on the toilet as well? But no. That would be even weirder, like this isn't weird. And a prototype should, um, it shouldn't be expensive, but you know the goal will be reached. This is actually near where I live and they created a security measure <laughs> for the car park. <laughs> and it, I asked around and the, it will, it, after the build, it will cost additional 3,000 euros to fix this because there's a guy coming, he needs to take off the, the, yeah, the arm. You really want more prices, right? Yeah. Um, but it's not really secure. And I know these are some real life examples, but there are some examples with mobile phones. By the way, this is an iPhone example. Uh, this application is called like Sex Offenders Search. Prior to this, it was called Sex Offenders and it wants to know your location. But really, is this a good question to ask? Do I want to? <laughs> Probably not, right? Well, maybe, but not for me. And as of last week and yesterday, I found a German example. Woohoo! Congratulations. You probably know this app. Uh, we're gonna do a roast. So, a good example. The DB stands for Deutsche Bahn? Yeah. Okay, thank God. So this is the first screen and uh, I can fill in my destination. And what do you think will happen if I press that button? No, it's not that bad. No, it's bad. But <laughs> Sorry? It resets. But why a trash can? Trash can for me is deleting stuff and not clearing the field. By the way, uh, there's no developer from Deutsche Bahn app here, sort of. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Bear me the five minutes. Um, but hey, trash can, obviously once you have done it, you know, but for a prototype, this should be a user as I am, 
uh, it wasn't clear what the delete button is. But we will go to the sliding menu. So I pressed back, or the sliding menu. There's an awesome sliding menu. By the way, what's the difference between help and info? I do not know. Um, and I click on help, and really awesome, I get help. Nothing wrong with that, right? But what? No, 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 it's okay. It's not, it's not the worst, trust me. What will happen if I press back? Come on. Watch. Oh. Why? Why do I, I'm not that dumb. I know what I want, I want back, I want back, I want to see the sliding menu. I don't know what's the reason behind this, and obviously there, there, was, there will be a good reason. I don't know, I'm a dumb user. For me, I'm an Android guy, so if I press back, I just want to go back. <coughs> so, prototype is basically a visual, I, I, you visualize your IDs and you share them with all kinds of people. Not only the users, but your clients, maybe your investors, and if you're a loner, this is just share them with yourself. So basically, you gotta fake it till you make it. Again, who's this? Yes, nerd. <laughs> Steve Urkel. The f by the way, it's the first nerd on a television show. So, these, this is the, um, one of the most sensitive topics I can discuss with uh, UX designers, user interface designers, because who is responsible for making the application? And in a conventional way, an inter interaction designer or a user interface designer always thinks that's me. Right? That's, that's the normal world we're living in. But, as a programmer, you have something to say. You can't say, I can't make that, because you're such good developers, you can make everything. But it's not always the most uh, easy thing to do. So you have a say in how a application should work, should look like, should be functioning. And also the consumer, because he's paying for it. So if the user interface designer creates a awesome, awesome, um, let's say, screenshots, and the user say, cool, I want that, and the programmer says, well, fine, that's like $2 million, 2 million euros. The customer says, Beep, you. So the customer has a say, and normally a customer gives boundaries to your prototype, as a programmer normally uh, does but doesn't say. So I hear you say, so what makes a good prototype? What did I know how a prototype should something like function, but what makes it good? What makes it a selling point in my normal day job? Well, there's four steps. It should be quick and cheap to make, with a minimal effort, and it should be testable. And again, the last one I will discuss later, because for me, it's one of the um, best assets I have learned throughout the years. I can make an awesome prototype, and I, have some I will get back on that. So, before we start, I hope I'm not insulting any, anybody. By the way, I saw a photo of her yesterday, where she was still younger, she looks better now. <laughs> Sorry. So, uh, there are two types of prototyping. You have the experimental one, where basically you're free formatting the whatever you want. You dump a lot of pizzas in one room and go crazy, and you don't have any goal, it's just free formatting. And who knows, maybe, maybe something cool will come out. And you have the more technical one where you need to solve a problem or you need some service or an application which you need fulfilled and you try to reach that goal. <coughs> and here goes another question for you. So this is a normal uh, process for a software product. Either a mobile application or even like an <coughs> iOS application. 
So where should we use a prototype? And what I do, I will start, where should we start? I will walk the line and you have to say stop where you think a prototype should be handy. <laughs> here? Not here? And here? Let me in on a secret, it's the complete line. Because normal, what you do, you, you start uh, building, or you start creating your application, and it's a cycle that you run, it's a sprint, it's whatever technique you're used to, um, but with every step you need to either create the prototype or adjust it, because the user has obviously new features that he created after seeing the first prototype, or uh, the budget, there's no more budget, and he thinks, okay, we need to strip or we need to wait, but every time your prototype should be changed. So, no prizes. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> so, let's start by creating a prototype. And first thing we should do is obviously we need to plan. And it's, again, this sounds easy, but what I mean is you have to define some kind of uh, a functional block. For me, that's user interface. It's a definition of what a, um, a, a basic function of the application would be, like, give me some examples. Uh, I'm creating an application, I want to see where I am on the map, I want to share stuff with my friends. It doesn't have to be big, you don't need to write like uh, 15 pages of use cases, just drill down to the essential of your application. So now I have my, use, my uh, user stories. These user stories need to combine with each other to make some kind of logical sense. So you can create a user flow, which basically gives you a good overview of uh, the interaction between the different functions. And of course, we can create some awesome screens. And this gives you a good representative, a good representation of your application or some kind of final product and how it should look, right? Cal, that was easy, we just planned and did some with paper. But when it comes to building, and I don't mean building the actual application, I'm still talking about prototypes, so we can start by building your prototype. So I can go to the store or online and I can buy a UI stencil and I can create the uh, rough, I, I go from a rough interface to a really high definition of a screen. But when I'm drawing and I decide, well, the button should be not on the left, on the right, I need to throw away and I need to create a new one. This is really time consuming, <coughs> is my opinion. And you can, or let's, what else can we do? Wait, we can, what is called, use paper. And it's a clip, and this is actually done at, uh, with the Expedia application. So a guy that is sketching, a, there is about 20 uh, screens, and for every interaction he draws something, and then there's a camera, and he tries to do this. It's much cooler, right? You can see more interaction. It's not static anymore. It shows you a way the user can interact with the application. So there's more dynamic in your prototype. But can you imagine you have like 30 screens and for every there's a button and there's a, uh, an error. Trust me, it will take weeks. And I don't have any money because it needs to be quick. So every UX designer uh, knows Photoshop. I'm not a UX designer, I'm a developer. I know a little about UX and I don't want to spend much time learning Photoshop or buying a, a license. So for me, for you, it can be handy, for some it can't, but there's a possibility you can use templates and you even can create assets which you can use in your end of the application. 
By the way, I'm not selling this product, but we're using this product and that's because I am a lazy guy and I can do PowerPoint and I can do Keynote. So I bought a library, what's called Keynotopia, which I can drag components into and it kind of looks like a real application. Um, but the cool thing what you can do with Keynotopia and we I said we'll get back to testing is I can run it on an actual device. So I'm sorry this is an iPad and uh, that's because the Android version is still in like the third fourth beta version and but I can get it to you. N normally you for the iPad you pay like a euro and you can install your you can export your PowerPoint presentation as a clickable PDF you can install it on your iPad or iPhone and you can do this. And trust me, if you can run it on the device, the neat and good thing that you know is, okay, you designed a button on the center of your screen, but now you're pressing it with your finger. Is the button big enough? Is it, uh, if you test it with a end user, is it logical then when you press back, there's a pop-up screen? Probably not. So it actually runs a sort of uh, application, basically my prototype. Uh, also, there's a, uh, you can do it in the cloud. Everything is in the cloud right now. The um, fun thing with this and the good thing is you can easily share it with like people that aren't on location. I talk to a lot of people, I have a lot of customers and I'm not, a, I'm not always in the luxury that I'm at the consumer or the, the stakeholder or there with me. I don't need to go into a different location. I can just share them in the clouds, give them the link and they can run it. But trust me, there are a lot of possibilities. People that also create iOS will probably use Balsamic and there's loads more and even more coming. My best is advice. I have, I have a play with a, a bunch if you have the time, but it's really a good investment just to play with them and see what's your uh, best tool. So I mentioned testing. Um, a prototype should be tested and you must test several prototypes. So create a bunch of, for instance, I want to, I want to create a mug. I need to make different mugs in order to test if it's handy. But always be true to the user story, in this case, holding the liquid. It's exactly the same as you creating an application. I want to see where my location is, but do I want a Google map? Do I want a, uh, it, um, my own custom? How is the points of interest that's showing? How's the navigation? But try different ones. Don't be scared that you have to fail because if you fail at the end, it will cost you. Also, you have to choose the right audience. It's okay if I, what I normally do, I create my prototype and obviously I will give it to my wife and she said, oh, it's bad or it's good or I really don't understand what, what you created. But she's not, the end, she's not the end user. She's not paying the bill. So, uh, she can be by the way, but um, always stick to your end user, to your stakeholder, to whoever pays because they're your target audience. Like with the Deutsche Bahn app, I'm a traveler. So for me, I'm the end user for people just sitting at home and almost uh, only do the commuting uh, every day the same, probably won't use the application. So my comment is, my comment is much better. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so you created your application, you built it in your application and you tested it then you need some kind of refi refinement. So what can you do? Show your customer, show your end user 
basically the guy or girl or company that's paying, show them the results of, yeah, it's broken. <laughs> okay, good team. Um, discuss the results. Let them show what uh, tests you did and what results. And don't be scared. Don't or don't be modest and say, okay, we created, but you're the god, you're... No, be honest. You still need to build the application. You have the results. You have to discuss the, these results with the end user. And if you find some anomalies, you know some difference, um, put it back in your prototype. Not, okay, there are some changes, and now we can create the app. No, redefine your... Uh, um, app your prototype with the findings you've got to make it even better or less worse and of course you can do it you can after refining you need to test it and then you need to refine it until everybody's happy so a good cycle and um, sharing by the way do you see the photo I thought it was really sad <laughs> he got like two drinks and he didn't and he's not happy. Um, the thing I want to talk to you about sharing, uh, don't be shy in uh, holding back your prototype to different uh, users. Ask what your mother thinks, ask what your family thinks, as long as you don't breach security. You can imagine if you're creating a banking application that you don't want to talk to the uh, other bank to see hey, what do you think of my uh, app. But don't be shy in sharing whatever prototype you have. And just have fun, play with it. It's not scared, it's, it's, trust me, it's easy. As long as it's the prototype, what can go wrong? <laughs> so let me sum up again. I've talked about planning, uh, try to Minimize what the application should be doing. I talked about, about building. If a paper uh, version of a prototype is good enough, use it if you want to be more enhanced, like uh, the runnable uh, prototype or even in the cloud, use it. Don't be scared of testing. Testing is a way for you to get back what, you, uh, what your brain is thinking. Refine it and then share. And I know it's, it's, it's been a long day, right? And you probably forget everything I have to say. So take this in consideration, take this as a picture. This is the most important thing. I'm not even gonna repeat it. So now I have two options. Either I can answer some questions. I have three basically. Either I can answer some questions and I still have, still have 15 minutes, right? Um, or I can answer a few questions and I've got a real life video of Ben making a fool of himself and me taking him with you, uh, taking him with him, or just show the video and then afterwards some questions. <laughs> Shall we do the video first? <laughs> so, oh, this is such cool. Last year I was in Istanbul and there was a, the Android Developer Days, which basically is the best conference outside of Europe for Android developers. And we were traveling from one location to the other, so from Istanbul to Ankara. And it's about a six hour drive, and our chauffeur, our chauffeur uh, took like five hours because he's driving 160 kilometers per hour. And we were bored, it was early. So we did some, we, we thought maybe we're gonna do a game. You know, everybody knows this game, right? It's Pong should be easy and as a good prototype what are the boundaries okay we're in a car it's good doing 160 kilometers so we can't do anything outside of the car we got some pen and paper of course and we've got this guy so these are my boundaries these are my user stories these are my objects so how can i create a this game any ideas or shall i just play it where is Ben, by the way? <sighs> okay. Have fun. So we have sound effects from this guy. We have 
the player. We even tried something about a score. Again, the guy is going 160 kilometers per hour. But wait, there's a score. Yeah, I'm winning. So with base, so I'm gonna talk while, or shall I shut up? Trying to be serious, but I can't hold it anymore. I, I, every time I hear the sound, I'm. Sa I, I thought he was saying like boobies. <laughs> and I'm gonna lose it. I'm gonna lose it. I will, uh, yeah, <laughs> before getting any worse. Yeah, you can. <laughs> the reason why I show you this clip, because basically it's the awesome way of showing you live prototyping. We're bored, we can't get out of the car, we got um, a minimal of stuff, but we do want to create the game and get across how you can play the game. So scoring, uh, objects, even sound effects. And uh, there's a short, um, like five minutes afterward, where we even get a stack overflow. Because the guy that is making the noise is laughing that hard, he can't play anymore. <laughs> so I think now it's time for some questions. Either everybody's, uh, oh yeah. I okay. Um, you showed us many ways to do prototyping and you're not such a big fan of uh, paper prototyping because it takes a lot of time, as I guess. So do you have a favorite way to, to really quickly implement things if you uh, want to show a customer a prototype? Um, it depends on the application. If I, uh, what we normally do, we do like four or five sessions with an end user or with the customer that is responsible for saying the go for the application. And if it's a small, uh, uh, product we do uh, uh, paper but I'm much quicker with keynote so what I do is during the session I will beam a keynote or PowerPoint and I can drag and drop the application and we have a finished prototype at the end of this workshop so for me this helps but I, I'm not saying the paper way is bad if you like it use it please use it as long as you do prototyping Again, yeah. Make him work, make him work. So how many iterations is it good to prototype? Like you said, you do one iteration, uh, you go once through the process and you refine, you rebuild, you retest. How many times is As it good or it's a maximum because? Uh, we've got a minimum of two and it all depends on your project. Like if you have 18 iterations, probably you need like 16 uh, uh, adjustment to your prototype. There's, there never was a situation in a corporate or in a enterprise world, or if you're a loner and you just create an awesome app by yourself, there's no, no biggie. But if you do have several iterations, there's always change to the feature. When you start, the features or the user story are never the same as when you finish. There's never any, there ne we say it's never in concrete. So every change, every new feature, every uh, change in priority, you need to change your prototype. Does this answer your question? So basically, until you have no changes anymore, you have to prototype. Yeah. And it's quick and easy, so who cares? That's it. Oh. Um, 
I was wondering, is there like a website or some sort of massive database which has an updated uh, kind of, of list or intelligence on, on people's expectations when you do a certain action? So say, for example, with the Deutsche Bahn thing, I, I can imagine the client you know, and the developer building that thing and, and the, the developer explaining it. And when you click this button, it goes back and the client would have gone something like, oh, but no, we definitely need a, do you really want to go back? Do you want, you know, kind of page? And then there'll be an argument and of course the client would have the say and, and that unnecessary page would remain. Is there like a, you know, I don't know, some sort of website which, you know, perhaps the developer could have shown the client, look, you know, most people's understanding when they click the back button is that it goes back automatically and, and so on and so forth for various different buttons. So basically buttons. you want user experience patterns or what a normal way should be how to implement. Yeah, well, and not, not should be, not so much should be, but what is the standard understanding for most people. Okay. I mean, it's, it's, it's a difficult one, I imagine, because it's uh, but shifting it's an all easy the question. time. Yeah? Okay. Or answer, yeah. no. <laughs> now, there, there are several ways. Um, for me, as a developer, and I do some with UX, first, buy a phone and play with it. There are some websites which you can use, like uh, Android View, and uh, there, there are a lot, but there are only a few that are really good. There is a, a Google Plus uh, community where you can uh, ask some questions as long as you're not a hardcore developer, but really uh, user experience type of stuff. There's obviously the documentation of Google. Is there anybody from Google here? Where's Stefan? Uh, it sucks, but <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, it isn't updated. So um, still the answer is no, there isn't one source, one database. And for me, it's just, I learn every day. I talk to people. I Last night I have, l uh, you know Marie Schweitz? Schweitz? Marie, what's her last name? Yeah, I had a discussion with her about the responsibility of a, a user experience designer and uh, still I've learned something. I guess the only thing is, I think as, 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 you know, as developers or people building this stuff every day, we have an intuitive understanding of what, how things should be, but when you're dealing with clients, who aren't, you know, very savvy on, on things and they, you know, and they insist on very, sometimes they insist on very um, unusable or pr unpragmatic sort of systems. It's just hard to... But then it's your responsibility yeah. to convince the consumer right, that yeah. his idea is crap. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's a really good point because mm -hmm. consumers, uh, d uh, definitely in the beginning, like half a year or a year ago, when uh, the Android application became really serious, like the uh, APK 14 um, uh, uh, user design and user experience became professional, uh, cust the customers are really dumb. They don't know what uh, you can do with an application and what you don't need to do with an application. So it's your, responsib your responsibility to educate the consumer as well. Good question. Oh, yeah, more hands. Make me run. Yeah. Faster. It's like David Hasselhoff, <laughs> but different. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So you talk, you t talk about prototypes um, in a way that they have no valid function. So m from my understanding, it's more what you say is a prototype. It's for me a mock-up. It's doing nothing than just pretending to do. And a prototype is bit closer for, for me for a minimum viable product, so something which is actually useful um, or it shows the main point of the application. Um, I see in the very beginning in the planning process when I have nothing then it's the right approach but if I'm in the middle of my development circle and I want more to know okay I have now this minimum viable product that's doing something, should I go more into this direction or into that direction? Do you have something to su suggest, a method or maybe a program or library or something that I can use my working application and add functionality really fast? So not with paper, putting on the phone? <sighs> um, 
for Android, there isn't. You're still, basically you're talking about two separate sources. Your actual code and your application. And obviously you can use the uh, XML editor to uh, scroll, but then again you're uh, changing code. And you can break stuff and uh, if, if you're really proud and think, oh this is what the customer wants, and you give it and he says, oh no, it's a uh, peep again. Um, then it's completely wasted and when you prototype it isn't. So there isn't a two source sync way tool framework thingy out there. Yeah. So that's a good job for you to make <laughs> and give it to Google or give it to the community and I will help you. Okay. It sounds good. Now I like you again. No. <laughs> uh, just one question, it's not actually related to, to prototyping but to user experience. How do you convince a manager uh, for some behavior when, let's say, for uh, one that happened to me last week, uh, when you provide the navigation drawer, you shouldn't provide uh, back navigation. And then you get Gmail, which does provide back navigation, and Google+, Plus, which doesn't, and most Google apps don't provide back navigation when they use the navigation drawer, and the new Play Store also provides uh, the back functionality. So how can you convince a manager that you should do what's written on the guidelines even though Google doesn't follow their own guidelines? Uh, that's a good question and I don't know the answer because uh, there isn't one way there's a, I can't show an application, this is the way, or I can't show a website uh, if a different application, even from Google, does the opposite. Uh, try to convince yourself and try to uh, explain why do you, why you think this should be done. Okay. That's the only advice I have for you. Okay, thanks. It's the same as I don't like the navigation drawer at all. But I'm not going to convince you that you need, don't need to use it. As long as you like it. And you've got good ratings. So uh, I think it's time. Thank you. And bis bald. <laughs> <laughs>